Yeah, I've got pitchers for tomorrow. Uh, we'll have King, Wojciechowski, Litge, uh, Bearclaw, Goody, Warren, and then Abreu and Lane possibly also. We take the first question from Brian Hoke. Brian, go ahead and unmute. Actually, I think my hand was uh, up from the previous one. Sorry. Okay. Dan, do you have a question? Aaron, uh, with the, the first game tomorrow, how how excited are you about you know getting the spring underway? And uh, and you know we asked I think you about it a few days ago, having fans back in the stands for the first time in in almost a year. What what do you think it's going to be like? Yeah. Um... I am excited for that. Uh, um, I'm excited to, you know, start to build from a game standpoint towards the regular season. Um, but it will be nice to to have some fans in the stands. And you know, ask me tomorrow. Um, but you know, in just in just watching some other events, you know, throughout the off season, you know, whether it was college football, NFL games. Uh, mm -hmm different games where fans were there um, in limited capacities. Uh, it does change the look and the feel, even watching it on TV, I felt like. So, um, you know, I'm sure it'll be nice for the guys to have that um, environment and the atmosphere that, that only the fans can create. And did, uh, did Severino do everything he was supposed to do this week? I know he, he told us he thought he'd throw four times, 120 <clears throat> He did. He's, he had another good week. He's he's really built some good momentum over the last few weeks. He'll have another week where he goes four times. Um, three of those will be a, a number a number of throws at 120. So it's been a few weeks of that now. And then hopefully if everything goes well next week, uh, he'll get on the mound. Yeah. Uh, we can go next to Ken Davidoff. Ken, please unmute. Aaron, I know we'll keep asking about last year's shortened season and the, and the ripple effect of that. I'm wondering, because you have, you have less information from last year, does that put more of a premium on, on what you see this spring as, as you're making decisions? Um, look, it all matters. I mean, it, it, everything goes into trying to make evaluations and decisions. Um, you know, I feel like with our club, um, you know, we're in a pretty good physical place right now and healthy. Um, you know, if we're able to remain healthy, I feel like I have a pretty good idea of what we're looking at. Um, it's going to be those guys that are really competing for final spots or spots at different times of the course of the year. You know, one of our messages always here is no matter how low on the totem pole you might think you are, that can change in a hurry. And we certainly saw that in 2019. Um, so, you know, all this will go into making decisions, evaluations, um, but I don't know if necessarily any more, more so. Do you have a top question you feel like you, you need to answer by opening day? Um, no, not as you ask me that right now. Um, you know, I'm sure as, as, as the spring unfolds, you know, I, I think with – with our starting pitchers, whether it's the guys returning from injury or the guys that didn't pitch a lot or some of the younger pitchers, um, you know, just how they're doing, how they're building up, and then kind of constantly evaluating where they're at physically and helping inform us of, you know, what we think they're going to be able to give us over the course of a season. Thanks, Aaron. Mm -hmm. uh, we can go next to Christy Ackert. Christy. What was the thing that made you feel, you know, the most about not having fans in the stands? What was the thing that really kind of hit you about not having them there last year? Uh, it was the Red Sox. First time we played the Red Sox um, is when I really noticed it. It just be, – because, honestly, I, I noticed it less in, in other situations. Like, for me, it was very easy to get kind of locked in at seven. It's game time, and, and the competitiveness of the game – you know, worked. It was effective. Um, but there were certain times, you know, the Red Sox series really stands out to me. A little bit the Mets as well, um, where there's just that normal extra buzz and angst and intensity in a regular season setting. 
Um, so, so more for me, it was just different times of, you know, the occasions when you do look up and take something in, um, you know, that wasn't there. But I would say the first time we played the Red Sox was the first time it, like, really hit me hard. Did, I know that you guys were trying to stay safe and, and in your, you know, bubbles or whatever. Did that carry over into the offseason? Did fans approach you, or were you able to, or did you have to kind of keep that going during the winter? And, and, and well, how was it different? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, when we got into the off season, so October, November, December, um, and and in the Northeast where, you know, the pandemic kind of quieted down a little bit and, and things were opened up a little bit, my, my kids were, you know, in varying degrees able to play some of their sports. So I was out at fields and things like that, um, you know, going to dinner or something wasn't the same, but we were able to do it somewhat. Um so still different, um, but but certainly um, a lot different and a lot more open and interactive than than say when we got back to New York in in April, May, and June. Certainly, Lindsay Adler, please unmute. You have the next question. Aaron, I, I hope this makes sense, so stick with me. But guys, obviously, spring training in different ways. You know, some are trying to tinker with the changeup, some are trying to make schemes. Given the protocols, having the team separated this year and the limited game schedule, does the like purpose or value of spring training feel different to you this year than it has normally? Uh, yeah, it definitely feels different already because we're at two different places. You know, so you know I'm driving back and forth every single day, and you know trying to still strike that balance to really try and make sure I'm seeing and touching or whatever the things I, I'm prioritizing, and I got to be a little more. Um, kind of strategic about how I do that because I can't just flow from one place to the other. So even even though, you know, the place is, the, the proximity is good, so you can kind of do it. But that part, and, and <clears throat> you know, we're fortunate that we have a great facility over at Himes, our, you know, and, and where it's come over the last few years. There's a lot of real benefits, obviously, for our pitchers and catchers being over there. But I also really value our team being together and I think that's really important especially for some of the new guys you know the the Klubers and the Tyones like they need to be with our position players here and so um, you know sometime um, you know in the near future um, we're gonna we're gonna make some switches as far as getting guys over here on a more permanent basis and uh, so they are together because I really do value the the camaraderie that that's important to always develop, but certainly in spring training and certainly when you're dealing with some new players. And go next to Brendan Cuddy. Hey Aaron, when you mention making some changes, is that the guys you could cut from major league camp and maybe transpose them with Hines and? Bring the catchers over to GMS that we're about. Yeah, we'll we'll do some things. Um, uh, our, our we'll have Gary uh, Chirinos and Higashioka, for example. They're they're actually st coming over here tomorrow. They'll be over here starting tomorrow permanently. Um, but then we'll do some some swapping out of some guys sometime in the near future. Uh, I'm not sure exactly the date. I want to do it yet, but. Um, it is something on the board that that I plan on doing at some point to to at least get a couple few weeks, um, you know, of our guys that we're expecting to, you know, break camp. That uh, you know, getting them together is an, something that's important to me. And just housekeeping, last day of full workouts, all your guys healthy? Uh, that yeah, um, yeah, we're we're good. Um, um, today was a, it turned out they hit for a, for a while, but it was a fairly light day for the position players rolling into, um, to games, but yeah, everyone's, everyone's, we're in pretty good shape. Um, <clears throat> Nestor Cortez had a little bit of an ankle issue, but I don't think it's going to slow him down at all. Um, you know, he should be able to make his turn here in the first couple days. Pete Caldera, go ahead and unmute. You have the next question. 
Aaron, um, I guess with, 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 your, with your starting lineup, you know some of the spots that you, you, you want to fill, but uh, have you done any of the back of the envelope type stuff about how you want to you know, roll this out to, like on a, you know, an opening day situation? Um, yeah, I mean, I, look, I, I, I think you know who, who our guys are, and, you know, with health, you know, we're talking about, you know, potentially just the last spot or two on, on, on a roster. And, and obviously we've brought some interesting guys in um, in a non-roster situation. Um, so they could, they could certainly push into the conversations or, or force a difficult decision. Um, you know, that, that, I mean, that's, that's just the uh, – those will all declare themselves as spring goes on.